30 days hath September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except for February alone, which has 28 days clear and 29 each leap year. Who would have thought that there'd be almost 30 variations of that silly little riddle? But silly as it may, I use that riddle so often because I always forget how many days are in a particular month of the year. So uh, it's uh, very valuable and reading the variations of it um, just goes to show that it's, uh, it's a universal thing that's uh, said all over the world. Um, and everyone's put their little spin on it, but more or less it's the same. Well, it's definitely the same facts, of course. Anyway, I digress. Welcome to the Andy Social Podcast. <laughs> You'll be listening to this uh, podcast episode hopefully on February 29th, 2016. That will be the date that this podcast goes live. So hopefully you'll be able to listen to it the same day. A very short podcast, just a little in-betweener to celebrate this one in four year event. Um, I only became aware of the Leap Year Day a couple of days ago and thought that I would uh, celebrate the day by going through a few little tidbits of information and rubbish that I found on the internet and mostly from semi-legitimate sources to throw a few knowledge bombs your way or at least uh, lightly entertain you um, either on your commute to work or as you uh, as you close your little eyes before you uh, drift off into uh, into dreamland. So first of all, I thought I'd run, give a rundown of what a leap day and a leap year is. Now, this is where I'm absolutely going to grab your attention. You will not want this podcast episode to end. You'll just be absolutely glued to your seat, to your treadmill, to your pillow, whatever it may be. So let me explain from this reliable web link that I found via a Google search of what a leap year and what a leap day is. So bear with me and hang on. <laughs> so our solar year, the time required for the Earth to travel around the sun is 365.24219 days. Our calendar year is either 365 days in a non-leap non year or 366 days in a leap year. So that's when the Febu February 29th is included, such as 2016. Every leap year, every four years gives us 365.25 days, sending our seasons off course and eventually into the wrong months. So to change this, we have to skip a few of the leap days. So in other words, a few of the leap years where the century marks are not div divisible by 400. So hang on here, guys, bear with me. <laughs> so with a few calculations, and tweaks of the calendar by skipping three or four century leap years, we can average out the calendar year to 365.2425, which is very close to the solar year of 365.24219. I know that you're extremely, extremely glued to your seat and, and uh, all attentions on what I'm saying right now. <laughs> so a bit of background, a bit of history. The Romans originally had a 355 day calendar. So to keep up with the seasons, there was an extra 22 or a 23 day month that was inserted every second year. For reasons unknown, this extra month was only observed now and then. So basically whenever the hell they felt like it all remembered. Now by Julius Caesar's time, this se the seasons no longer occurred at the same calendar periods as history had shown. So to correct this, Caesar eliminated the extra month and added one or two extra days to the end of various months. Um, and his month included, which was Quintilis, which was later renamed to Julius and as we know today, July. This extended the calendar to 365 days. Also intended was an extra calendar day every fourth year following the 28th of February, but after Caesar's death in 44 BC, the calendars were written with an extra day every three years in, instead of every four years until it was corrected in 8 AD. So I wonder if they actually did that deliberately or they just completely cocked up and didn't know what they were doing after he died. So they couldn't count themselves because they were dead shits and they only calculated three, day, three years instead of four. Anyway, I digress. So again, the calendar drifted away from the four set, from from the usual seasons because of that adjustment again. However, by 1582, so we're 
we they've stuck with this shitty uh, calendar system for quite a number of years. Uh, Pope Gregory VIII recognised that Easter would eventually become closer and closer to Christmas. Now, let me digress again. That is obviously a very, very concerning thing to observe because you know, anybody who hates uh, buying gifts for other people, hates shopping, anything as such, the last thing you want to do is be buying Easter eggs at the same time as you're buying Christmas presents for people. It's just not on. So luckily for old mate uh, Gregory, he was able to you know, identify this in, a, in advance and make the, uh, the correct adjustment to alleviate this, uh, this potential disaster. Uh, so the calendar was reformed so that a leap day would occur in any year that is divisible by four. However, not divisible by 100, except for when the year is divisible by 400. As a result, 1600 and 2000, although century marks, have a leap day. The calendar that we use today, which is known as the Gregorian calendar, makes our year 365.2425 days, only off from our solar year by 0 0.00031 which amounts to only one day's error after 4,000 years. So whoop de doo will be long gone by, by the time someone uh, works out that they're missing a day or they're out by a day. But uh, you know, for the, for the short term of 4,000 years, we'll, we'll be just fine. So a lot of uh, interesting uh, tidbits of information there for you to take away um, and pass on to your uh, colleagues. Now, moving along from that, I thought I'd check and see if there's any special events that happened on the 29th of February, um, any little tidbits of information that may uh, spark some interest. So um, I checked on a whole bunch of links. There's a bunch of crap out there. There was one link from the Telegraph that had the top 20, 20, the top 20 craziest facts about leap years. Unfortunately, when you have one of those top 20 that includes uh, the fact that Ja Rule, the rapper, was born on the 29th of February pretty much eliminates any legitimacy behind uh, such a list. So I didn't really get a great deal from this particular list at all, um, but I di it did lead me to a few other sections. Um, funnily enough, which I didn't realise, the 29th of February um, has a lot of superstition, superstition around marriage. Um, Allegedly in Scotland, an unmarried Queen Margaret ad allegedly once again <laughs> enacted a law in 1288 allowing women to propose on a leap year day. But there was a catch. The proposer had to wear a red petticoat, so a skirt under her skirt, to warn her intended that she planned to pop the question. From what I understand, if uh, the guy turned around and rejected or declined the offer, then he would have to pay her a fine or um, compensate her in the form of clothes or I believe 12 gloves, which were to hide the tears um, that no doubt the lady would shed when being rejected. Um, apparently on the opposite, opposite end of the spectrum in Greece, it's considered um, bad luck to propose on a leap year. So you'll see no Greeks getting married this year or at least proposing this year, I should, should say. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, there's a whole bunch of other rubbish around marriage, which doesn't really interest me a great deal. Um, good old Wikipedia came through with the goods with a few different things. There's quite a lengthy uh, article about the, the date, the 29th of February. Um, quite a number of events that happened on this date. Um, what can I see here? Such as in 1504, Christopher Columbus uses his knowledge of a lunar eclipse that night to convince Native Americans to provide him with supplies. Uh -huh. uh, what else do we have? In 1916, in South Carolina, the minimum working age for factory, mill and mine workers is raised from the age of 12 to 14 years old. So hooray for child labour. Uh, in 1936, the February 26th incident in Tokyo ends. Uh, you may ask, what is the February 26th incident? What that is was an attempted uh, military coup uh, that was organised by a group of young officers from the Imperial Japanese Army. So uh, their goal was to purge the government and take over military military leadership um, and basically run the show. Didn't last for too long. 
as stated, ended on the 29th of February um, and ended up with 19 of the uh, leaders in the movement getting executed for mutiny and another 40 of them being imprisoned. Uh, there's actually quite a lengthy article about this that goes on for quite a number of pages. So I'll put a link in there because it does look quite interesting. Uh, I haven't read it, you know, maybe I should have, cause I could have thrown a few, uh, additional bits of information your way, but, uh, Hey, times of the essence, uh, going back to my event calendar, uh, we also had, uh, my mouse is just taking me away from the page. Uh, oh, yeah, in 1964 in Sydney, Australian swimmer Dawn Fraser sets a new world record in the 100 metre freestyle swimming competition of 58.9 seconds. Hooray for Dawn. Uh, in 1988, South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu is arrested along with 100 clergymen during a five-day anti-apartheid demonstration in Cape Town. Uh, the Second Chechen War in the year 2000, where 84 Russian paratroopers are killed in a rebel attack on a guard post near Ulus Kurt. Um, there is a lot of war. Um, I was going to use the word milestones, maybe not the best uh, best uh, word to use, but um, there's quite a number of uh, points in history here that happened on the 29th uh, that were all based around war. So I won't spend too much time on on them, but uh, there was a, an interesting one, a lighthearted one. In 2012, the Tokyo Skytree uh, had completed construction. Uh, it's now the tallest tower in the world at 634 metres high and is the second tallest man-made structure on Earth next to the Bur Buraj or Burj uh, Khalifa. And I probably completely mispronounced that name, so my apologies. I'd love to go there, actually. Um, it'd, be a, it'd be incredible. This tower in Dubai is just ridiculous. And I'll, I'll put a couple of links in the show notes. Uh, going back to the Tokyo Skytree, um, I actually... Um, visited the Tokyo Sky Tree in 2013 uh, with Jess um, and very, very cool, an amazing uh, structure in in Tokyo. And um, you don't really realize how, I mean, you can see how big this thing is, but when you're up there and you're so high above the city, you can see how gigantic Tokyo really is. It's one of the best places to be. So if you're ever planning to uh, either go back to Tokyo or you're heading there for the first time, definitely check out the Sky Tree. Um, there is a train station right near it, but I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. However, it is a short walk from Asakusa Station, um, which is a big sort of touristy area. There's a, a gigantic shrine there. Um, and you can walk there uh, past the uh, the big Asahi building and whatnot, and you'll get to the Sky Tree. You'll see it through the buildings. So you just got to follow follow the path there. But um, very very cool and highly recommended to check it out. Um, what other tidbits of information do I have on this page? Uh, a person born on the Feb on the 29th of February may be called a leapling or a leap year baby. In non leap years, some leaplings celebrate their birthday on either the 28th of February or the 1st of March while others only observe birthdays on their authentic intercalary date of February 29th. Um, extending on that, in depending on the country that you live in, when you turn 18, uh, so in, you know, in a large number of, I, I can't say the majority because I've got no idea, but in a large number of countries around the world, 18 is the uh, age of becoming an adult or of legal age, etc., cetera, um, to do things such as drinking and whatnot. Uh, in some countries, it's not recognized as 18 until you hit March 1st on a non-leap year, or uh, in other countries, it's actually uh, February 28th, um, such as Taiwan. So you, you're lucky in that sense. Um, if it is a leap year, then obviously you're fine with the 29th. Uh, there's heaps and heaps of people that have been born on the 29th of February, and I look at the list and my eyes are glazing over. Um, but there appears to be a lot of interesting and important people, uh, authors, uh, composers, sporting people, historians, uh, what else have we got here? Lawyers and cartoonists and mathematicians and I don't know, there's a there's probably a couple hundred here. Um, lots of people that have died on the 29th of February, as you would expect. Um, lots of people of note, but I'm not going to go through them either because I sort of glaze over on them as well. Um, there are a number of holidays and observances for the 29th of February. 
a bunch of Christian feast days, which I don't really give two hoots about. Um, so I'm not going to touch on them. How rude of me. I will say them very quickly. Uh, Actually, I'm not because I can't pronounce half of them, so I'm not even going to bother. I'll just put the link to the Wikipedia page, and if you really feel inclined, you can scroll down. <laughs> but a very interesting day is the Rare Disease Day. And I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. What's that all about? So I clicked on that, and the Rare Disease Day is held on the last day of February, on the 29th of February, and it raises awareness for rare diseases and improves access to treatment and medical representation for individuals with rare diseases and their families. So it goes off on a whole spiel. There's a number of countries involved, started in the US by the looks of it, uh, but also recognized in China, Australia, Taiwan, Latin America. Um, there's actually quite a, a long list of, of uh, countries that have been involved. But then it, I, it got me thinking going, well, what is a rare disease? Like, I mean, I, I I can I can have guesses of what sort of things could be rare diseases like deformities and I don't know all sorts of things, um, but I wanted to have a look and see some examples. So there's a there's a uh, an offshoot link off this page. This is all Wikipedia, by the way. You know the most uh, trusted resource in the world, and um, and there's an A to Z of rare diseases. So I had a look through, skimmed through a lot of stuff. Um, and came across uh, the Turner syndrome. And I picked this one out of tribute to my good friend Turner, um, who hopefully is listening to this very, very interesting podcast. Uh, and I'll explain what the Turner syndrome is because it does sound very um, non-eventful. However, the Turner syndrome, TS, also known as the Ulrich Turner syndrome, is a condition in which a female is partly or completely missing an X chromosome. Big deal, you say. Just a simple X chromosome. However, signs and symptoms vary among those affected. Often, a short and webbed neck, low set ears, low hairline at the back of the neck, short stature, and swollen hands and feet are seen at birth. Typically, they are without menstrual periods, do not develop breasts, and are unable to have children. Well, I, um, call, me, call me dumb, but I assume that if you don't have menstrual periods and you probably couldn't have children. I'll put two and two together. That could be the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life. I, I have no idea. But anyway, uh, heart, also heart defects, diabetes, and low thyroid hormone occur more frequently. Most people with TS have normal intelligence. Many, however, have troubles with spatial visual, visualization, such as the need for, such, that, such as that's needed for mathematics. I just got that one out for you. Uh, vision and hearing problems occur more often. Uh, the syndrome is not usually inherited from a person's parents. Uh, there are no environmental risks that are known, and the mother's age does not play a role in the syndrome. So um, most people have 46 chromosomes, but people with TS usually have 45. Um, there are variations of the syndrome, um, which I'm not going to bother going into um, because I don't even know what I'm talking about, so I'm not going to pretend I do. Um, the syndrome occurs between 1 in 2 thousand people and one in five thousand females at birth all regions of the world and cultures are affected about equally people with ts have a shorter life expectancy mostly due to heart problems and diabetes henry turner first described the condition in 1938 there are a number of pictures here that are a little bit disturbing but you know if it's something of interest to you you can have a look um it actually goes into quite quite a fair bit of, of detail i'm not sure i've never heard of it before um you could uh I shouldn't say disturbing either. It's not that bad. You know, it depends on your stomach. It's not that bad. But um, some other signs and symptoms include low hairline, um, increased weight and obesity, uh, small fingernails, and there's characteristic facial features. Uh, what else have we got here? Horseshoe kidney, visual impairments, ear infections and hearing loss, hip weight to high weight to hip ratio so the hips are not as not much bigger than the waist um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so problems with concentration memory attention with hyperactivity seen mostly in children and adolescents and non-verbal learning disabilities so problems with mass social skills and spatial relations um, other features may include a smaller jawbone uh, soft upturned nails and drooping eyelids less common are pigmented moles hearing loss 
in a high arc palette. Uh, Turner syndrome manifests itself in, uh, differently in each female affected by the condition. Therefore, no two individuals share the same features. While most of the physical findings are harmless, significant medical problems can be associated with the syndrome. So in other words, it sucks and it's not as uh, non-eventful as the name may uh, initially lure. Uh, so moving on from there, there are a whole bunch of links here and I keep closing these links, but I better reopen them so at least I can find them later on and put them in the show notes for you all because I no doubt you'll be racing to your laptops or to your smartphones to find all these links and click on them and, and just uh, find more talking uh, topics to bring up at your next uh, little social gathering. Uh, what I will do hitting the 15 minute mark now is I will touch on a little bit of information that a friend of mine, Broden, uh, passed through to me about a deck of cards. And um, it was a bit of inspiration behind this uh, in-between episode as well. And whether, I mean, to me, it's quite amazing. Um, it's probably just common knowledge for the majority of people in the world. And I'm usually the last to find out about anything interesting like this. But uh, I'll say it anyway, and it's a good way to uh, to end off this uh, this little episode for, for you all and to kick uh, your mo- Monday off on a fantastic high note. I mean, the, the, only, the only way past here is down, really. I mean, you, you pretty much hit your peak now. Anyway, moving along. So a deck of cards consists of 52 playing cards and two jokers. So in total, there's 54 cards. However, we'll, we'll leave the two jokers to the side for later. So there are red cards and black cards, which represent day and night. There are 52 playing cards, which represent the 52 weeks in a year. Now there are four seasons in a year that are represented by the four suits in the deck, which are spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. Each suit has 13 values representing the 13 lunar cycles. And if you're if you're able to add all the values of the cards together, ace being one through to jack being 11, queen 12, and queen th- and king 13, you add all the values from all suits together and you get 364. Add one of your jokers and this is 365 being the amounts of days, the amount of days in the standard year. So the symbol behind the final joker is to make up that extra day in the leap here, making it 366 days. So take that away, write it down, make sure you tell your mum and your dad, impress them that you know, you've, uh, you've amounted to something in your life. Maybe tell a loved one, maybe when you're about to go to sleep, um, just throw that last little knowledge bomb that can just rest in their mind as they try and drift off into dreamland. I'm sure that uh, they'll be forever grateful for that uh, tidbit of information for you. And uh, that caps off February 29th, 2016. Uh, a final word with regards to the date. A big happy birthday to my mate Stephen. Uh, We always joke about uh, you being only four or five or six years old. And uh, and this is obviously a special day for you that you can only celebrate once every four years. So enjoy the day, mate. Uh, Hopefully you'll listen to it today and not in three or four weeks' time. And if you do, then uh, then, I hope you'd had a great day anyway. That's it for the podcast uh, for today. Uh, Probably will be a podcast later in the week if I can pull my finger out. Um, Hope you're enjoying it so far. Rate, review, comment, find me on all the social media links, search for Andy Dowling or Andy Social Podcast, find the band online, lord.net.au. You can search for Lord Official on all the social media platforms and use the code word Andy Social, one word on the Lord web store, which is lord.net.au slash store where you get 10 percent of everything on the store so thank you very much for having listened to this little uh bunch of ramblings uh on this fine day february 29th 2016 and we'll speak very soon bye-bye Yo!